Hello and welcome to Tiddlet TV. I'm Johan Verlot and I'm an application engineer for Tiddlet. And today I would like to tell you a little bit more about safety and cutting discs, also known as slitting discs. So first of all, your personal safety equipment. What is that? The leather apron, that's gonna be the gloves, that's gonna be the safety glasses, that's gonna be the ear protection, and of course, a dust mask. Or you can have, of course, a complete filter uh, system with a complete facial protection. That's also a possibility. So this is what is actually required working with uh, cutting discs. What kind of information do we find on a cutting disc? There is quite a lot of information available concerning the use and safety of the cutting disc. So all this information you will find on the label of your cutting disc. What is that going to be? That's going to be the safety pictograms about uh, personal safety equipment that you have to use. Also that you have to read the safety manual that is included in every box from Tyrolit. Also that if you have a disc that has become moist or that has been stored when you had uh, rain dropping on it, you shouldn't use that disc anymore. Also a disc that has a visible damage, you shouldn't use that disc anymore. That can be a crack, that can be something that broke off. You shouldn't use that disc anymore. Also, you shouldn't use a disc with lateral force, meaning you shouldn't deburr with it, you shouldn't grind with it. Not using a lateral force of a cutting disc. Then other information right here is about the application. For this disc, you can use the disc safely on steel and stainless steel. We also have specifications for non-ferrous material or cast iron or stone or other materials that have the pictogram or the indication on where you can use them, on what you can use them, right there. The last point that I want to explain to you concerning information on a, the label of a cutting disc is the expiring date. The expiring date you will find on the middle hub right there uh, indicating the month and the year when the disc is going to expire. In this case it is January 2024. Now every bonded abrasive has an expiring date. That means that, what does that mean? Is three years after production the disc is going to expire. That doesn't mean that the disc is going to self-destruct, no, but it means that the resin for that disc is going to deteriorate, the performance is not going to be there anymore, and also concerning liability. The manufacturer is not going to be liable anymore for that disc when it is used after the expiring date. And this is important for the safety of you as a, an, an, an operator of a, an angle grinder where a cutting disc is being used on. Also for the people working in the workshop or in a company and so on and so on. Don't use a disc that is after expiring date. So be aware of that. What not to do with a cutting disc? What not to do with a slitting disc? The name does say it, cutting disc. It's a disc for cutting. That means it's not a disc for deburring. It's not a disc for grinding. It's not a disc to use with a lateral force. Now, lateral force is, for instance, if you start making a radius, it's lateral force. There's only that much a disc can take. And when you step over that, that tolerance, that, that uh, threshold, the disc will break. And a breaking disc, on a, on a machine that is turning, that is running, it's not a good thing. It can be dangerous, dangerous for the operator himself, but also dangerous for the people around him. So you should not use a cutting disc for grinding or deburring purposes. Now, I understand if you're working in maintenance or on site, that it's not always so easy to change from a slitting disc or a cutting disc to a grinding disc or a flap disc, that it would be ideal to have a disc that can actually do both. Well, good news for you, it does exist. There is a disc that is called the cutting grind, depressed center, two millimeter thickness, 
and an additional reinforcement in the middle that allows the disc to be safely used for cutting and grinding purposes. So there's a safe alternative for operations like that. The cutting grind can help you with those cases. Also interesting to know. Now, if we have a 125 millimeter disc, there's always a 230 millimeter disc. And look, look, and look at that. There is a huge difference in diameter. Logical, 125, 230. There's a, a large difference between those. Now, we're gonna put the discs on the machines where they belong to, meaning a 125 millimeter angle grinder and a 230 millimeter angle grinder. Happens to be, I have both lined in front of me. So if I would put the discs on there, you can see the different machines and you can see that actually those parts, the flanges, the nuts, are almost identical in diameter. There's a slight difference, but not much. And this is something that a little bit disturbing, because to me, this is too small for a big wheel like that. Uh, if it's suitable for a small one, yeah, okay, no problem. But for the big one, it's, it's, it's actually too small. And what does that give you as an operator? It gives you the fact that a disc is gonna be wobbling that the disc is not gonna be stable. It can lead to that. And that's not a nice thing. It can be risky, it's not comfortable to work with. And do we as a manufacturer try to make our thin discs on the large diameter, 230 by 1.9 or two millimeter, we try to do whatever we can. We try to uh, optimize how the glass fiber reinforcement is laid, uh, spread out nicely, uniform, as even as possible to avoid that imbalance. But the flange is actually too small for the large disc like that. Is there an easy solution? Yes, there is. Yes, there, that's a good thing. Yes, there is. So what is that easy solution? Is actually an accessory, an additional span, uh, flange from 76 millimeter that you can mount on the machine and stabilize the large disc. The large thin cutoff wheels, the large thin cutoff wheels of 1.9 or 2 millimeter thickness. How does it work? You put on the bottom part, put on your disc, the second part, and then finally tighten the whole thing together like that, and we're done. Done. This disc will run straight as on tracks. That's what's gonna happen with that disc. So it is making the use of the large cutoff wheel safer, better, more comfortable, and the performance will be improved as well. So this is a benefit, a small thing that can have a big influence on the work, of the safe work with a large, thin cutoff wheel. When to change a disc? Logically, when the disc is getting too small, worn down, and you can't work with it anymore, then you should change it. That's an easy one. The other one is, I come back in the morning, uh, and there's a machine lying on my workbench with a cutting disc on there, and it's not a disc that I mounted on that machine. Should I work with that disc? No, you shouldn't. Because you don't know what happened to that disc. You didn't put on it, you didn't work with it, so you have no idea. So that could be that the machine fell on the floor, the disc has a crack in there that you do not notice until the moment you start working with it. So if you didn't put it on, don't use it. Do not use it because you don't know what happened with it. So meaning, if you're done with your work for the day, take the disc from the machine, put it aside, that's your disc, you know what happened to it. And the next day, you put it back on and you can continue work with it. That's how it should be. This is what you need to do. Don't use something that's already mounted on the machine because you don't know what happened to it. How to mount or fix a workpiece in a vise. For that purpose, I have a workpiece that I'm gonna fix right in here. So there we go, done. Now, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut on this part. And if I would start cutting here, you can already see that's gonna cause a lot of vibration. A lot of vibration will mean I will have a wear of my disc that's gonna go very, very quickly. Also, I will have a lot of vibration. I will have a lot of heat development and a big burr developing there. Also, it's not so safe to work with because 
this can cause damage to the disc, which is not a good thing. The right way to fix that would be like this. Stable, no problem, ideal, no or less wear on the disc, no vibration and safe for me, the operator. So this is how it should be. A workpiece should be nicely fixed, no vibration, nicely mounted in that or on the workbench that it doesn't vibrate, that it doesn't bounce up and down and so on and so on. This is how it should be. This is quite important. How to cut? How to cut with a tin cutoff wheel? The best way to do or to work with is with an oscillating cut or a rotative cut on thicker parts. The reason why is like that you will have less heat development, it will be more stable, meaning more safe for the operator as well, So, and it will be more comfortable to work with. So this is how it should be done. So for that, to show you properly, I need to exaggerate a little bit. And by exaggerating a little bit, to show you that rotative cut, that uh, oscillating cut, I have a 40 by 40 hard ducts material that I want to cut with a 125 by one millimeter disc. That is quite, that is pushing it a little bit, but it's going to show you ideally how a rotative cut allows you to make a cut through this material without a problem, without damaging the disc, without creating a risk for the operator. So first of all, we need to mount and fix the workpiece nice and tight into the uh, vise here, like that, done. Then we need to put our disc on the machine. How do we do that? I think you all know that, but I do want to explain that to you. Put it on there, put the nut on there, there we go, the key, and then with a little bit force, not much, like that, that's more than enough just ready to work with. Don't use excessive force. Don't use too little force. Just a tight, little bit of strength, done. That's more than enough. And like that, we're ready to work on this part and make one cut through that to show you how an oscillating or a rotative cut absolutely works. So, safety protection, uh, the gloves, the mask, Extraction. Like that, you could see that a rotative cut goes actually very nice through it. You have less heat development on the part. You also have less wear on the disc itself by using a rotative cut. It's more stable, more comfortable, and safer for the operator. And this is basically what I wanted to show you today concerning the safety and the use of cutting discs. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for watching and wishing you all a very good day. All the best. Cheers. Bye-bye.